Hey Internet, Caligula here, and welcome to another episode of the Red Strings Club. I am really loving this game. I love the science fiction aspect of it. I love the graphics. I'm loving everything. In the last episode, we spent the episode in the bar with Donovan, making drinks, getting some information, trying to figure out what's going on with this plan called SPW Social Psyche Welfare? Warfare? I don't remember what the W is, but I guess we're going to find out more about this. But apparently, we're out of the bar with Donovan and hanging out with Brandace here and some masked figure, as well as someone who looks kind of like a, a Pokemon trainer. So let's see what's going on, Vega. So, social psyche welfare is some sort of digital happy pill, and the mirror neuron algorithm is supposed to spread it even among non-implant users? What? What kind of voodoo is that? Beats me. Donovan is looking into it. We're pretty much fucked. Supercontinent's private network is inaccessible from the outside. Is this the mass figure? I don't know what kind of voice to give this person. And their tower isn't the kind of place you can just walk into. You left us with a nice farewell president, eh? Present, eh, Ariadne? She's going to enjoy all this. Always love the hustle, that punk. Ah, uh, shall we perform the last rites? Sure you guys don't want me in on this? I'm not even part of Proxima. For some reason, Ariadne's chosen you as one of her digital heirs, so... Just accept her, Brandes. She sa shall live through us. Okay, I'll go first. Where is that? Ariadne, I'll have your empathy. Let me better read into our enemies' souls. Let me better understand our allies' passions. Huh. What is his name? Kyanbing? I don't know how you pronounce a Q at the beginning of a name. I think it's like a T, maybe? A Tianbing? Tianbing? Ariadne, I'll have your wits. Allow me to outsmart our foes. Help me, to help me survive on the field. Hmm, what are they taking? These little tubes? <laughs> Oh, of course, like, he's an Asian man <laughs> sitting like that. That's racist. That's racist. That was a very comfortable way to sit, though. Ariadne, I'll have your knowledge or I'll have your determination. Uh, knowledge? I'll have your knowledge. I hope you don't regret this. Dude, couldn't you be a bit more poetic? And look as corny as you two? No way. Ha ha ha. Okay, release her into the ocean now. Wait, wasn't there one in there? Why are you gonna just throw away your determination? Goodbye, warrior. Why didn't you take both of them? <laughs> or bring one back for Donovan? Donovan? Hey, Brandace, how you doing? Okay, so here are, we have to figure out what mirror neuron algorithm is. What is, what the mirror neuron algorithm is. We also have to figure out when they plan to execute this. I think that's one of the most important things. What role does Akara play in all this? Why is Supercontinent doing this? Is this legal? Is the government aware of this? Who is Supercontinent CEO? Uh, anyway, hey Brandace, how you doing? Yeah, I'm about to open shop. Haha, <laughs> yeah, Akara's doing great. You gotta see them. They even designed a little game for us to play between clients. Come on, don't be jealous. You can play with us when, you, when you're back. Did you find anything useful? Wow, you sure work fast. And when is this security breach happening? Tomorrow? I just started gathering info. We need more time. You sure there won't be another opportunity? Oh, shit. You need to do us a favor then. Look for the director of the MNA. Find the COO, Joanna Septis. Investigate Supercontinent CEO. Hmm. I think investigate Supercontinent CEO. Diana was pretty worried about Supercontinent CEO. She was genuinely frightened, I'm telling you. Diana has this crazy theory that the company's current CEO isn't Jack B. Gaynor anymore. Okay, so hopefully Brandis can figure that out. She's not a lunatic man. As she pointed out, Jack hasn't appeared in public at all over the last two years. I think we're sitting on a gigantic pile of dirt here. So please, dig into it. Donovan! Someone's approaching the bar. Gotta go. Take care. Bye. Who's coming? Why the alarm? Who is it? <gasps> Who the fuck is that? Is he a skeleton? <gasps> 
Ghost? Is that what it says? Ghost? I've heard you craft drinks based on emotions. You heard right. I've also heard you deal with information. You seem to be well informed. I happen to be a dealer of sorts myself. I can get you whatever you wish for. There's only one rule. No weapons, no living beings. I also happen to be thirsty as hell. So I thought we could be great business partners, you and I, Donovan. What do you say? Hmm, I'm pretty confident I can quench that thirst of yours. As long as you accept information as payment, I could really use an exotic supplier. Sure, don't worry about the details. Money is overrated in this city anyway. Let's take care of my thirst first, shall we? Hmm, looks like our regular bartending won't do here. We're gonna need this. This is the shaker. With it, we can combine two or more spirits to obtain a powerful mix. The resultant blend will have the combined ingredients of, if, of its effects. For example, if bourbon moves the soul disc up and tequila moves it right, the resultant combination will move the soul disc diagonally towards the upper right. That way you can achieve the same results using half the amount of spirits. That leaves extra space in the glass to explore otherwise unreachable emotions. Oh! Ooh. To use the shaker, just pour whatever you want inside it, then grab it and shake it up and down until the spirit colors merge. Okay, so I always forget which one goes which way. So let's see what's going on. Okay, so the absent moves it left. Hope he doesn't mind our style of bartending. The tequila moves it right. Um, the bourbon moves it up. Okay, so the bourbon is uplifting. And the vodka moves it down. Okay, so let's... Alright, I kind of already forgot what we do. Okay, so we need some absinthe and some bourbon. So let's go ahead and pour some bourbon, excuse me, some absinthe into the tumbler here. And then maybe a little <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> Why don't we try that? Which one warms the heart? <laughs> this guy needs a heart warming. Okay, uh, so, oh, so the absinthe. So we'll just, hmm, why don't we toss a little vodka into? We'll just, we'll make this a little, a little mix of drinks. So, oh, how about some ice? Oh shit, I dropped it. Some ice cubes? Yeah, we'll make this a quite an icy drink. Oh, I dropped that one too. Okay, let's shake it, shake it. Am I shaking it? Oh shit, I still dropped the drink. Damn. Let's try this again. All right, some absinthe, some bourbon. I wish we had one of those pills to put in here because this seems like an interesting character. All right, a little bit of everything. Some ice. Is this what we're supposed to do? I don't think that this is what we're supposed to do. Is this it? Oh shit, I dropped it. Ah oh, fuck, I spilled it again. All right, let's try this again. I think that we just have to move it up and down to mix it. Maybe I just wasn't doing it right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Are we mixing it? Is it working? Do I have to use the up and down arrow keys? What? Side to side? Done. Figured it out, finally. All right, let's see how he likes it. Uh, so buddy, what's with the mask? He lifted it up to drink it. Mmm, this flavor. So the legends were true. You are able to sink the customer's emotions with your cocktails. Can you tell? Yeah, I'm cut from different cloth than the rest of you mortals. But don't sweat it, your secret's safe with me. Mmm, okay, okay, so he's, he's immortal? As long as you enjoy your drink, I'm happy. Be happy then, because I haven't had a drink this good in ages. Good. How can I help you? Did you have something in mind for this partnership of ours? For now, let's say I'm interested in backing your crusade against Supercontinent. So let me know if I can get you anything you need. Hmm. You said you can get anything? 
Yes, as long as it isn't alive, I don't do weapons either. Do you do liquors? Ha, huh, no one never sent me for booze, but sure, can do. These liquors I need aren't your regular spirits. Red Secret and Blue Whisper, ooh. My master, previous owner of the Red Strings Club, had a couple of bottles, but I haven't been able to get any more since those ran dry. I could work wonders with them. Sounds like an interesting endeavor. Consider it done. I'll be back with your stuff. Thanks for the drink. See you later, Donovan. Okay. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Why was she afraid of him? That was a bit intense. Quiz time then? No. No? I... I can't. I was unable to read the subject. Who is he? Oh, it looks like you're not omnipotent after all. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. It puts me at ease, to be honest. Why? I find flaws to be a quick shortcut to empathy. Virtue begets admiration, sure, but a weakness here and there draws compassion and sympathy. No one likes a know-it-all. I see. I'll try to fail more often so you can feel more comfortable. <laughs> no, that wasn't the point. Don't do that, Akara. Just be yourself. I like you already, okay? To be myself? Don't overthink it. You can't be anyone else. Okay. I'm still curious. Who is he? Mmm. This was my first time meeting him in person, but I've heard of him before. Hmm. None of my contacts treated with him directly, but we've all heard the legends. A bizarre smuggler who can get you anything you want in less than 24 hours. They call him Ghost. He never asks for money, although clients always pay. Aren't you afraid? Can't say I'm not, as I'm sure your empathetic devices have already told you. On the other hand, Ghost is not the only supernatural dealer around. I detect a client approaching the club. Background check? Larissa Robillard, age 29, marketing director at Supercontinent Limited. Oh, oh nice, it looks like we hit the jackpot. Do you know her? She's one of the wildest night beasts a Neon has ever witnessed. If you run a club in this city, you're fated to meet her. Oh, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> this lady's got a fupa and uh, her tits are a bit saggy, but that fupa was really flopping around. <laughs> I don't mean to like fat shame or anything, but it did really surprise me quite a lot. Anyway, welcome to the Red Strings Club. I love you. Okay. Me too, Larissa. I missed you. It's been five days since your last visit. How cute. Did you actually count the days? Like every bartender in this town. I'm sorry I haven't been here sooner, Donnie. It's been a hectic week at work. Haven't set foot in a bar in three days already. And I've heard many of my colleagues have been visiting the Red Strings Club as of late. So unfair. I came here as soon as I finished tying up loose ends at the office. Haha, I may have to rebrand if my only clientele are going to be corp breed bastards. Please, don't. This is one of the few real places left to have a drink in this city. Although if you actually rebrand, you have my card, right? You never miss an opportunity. I just love my job. Do you have any of my stuff left? I'm fully stocked on your stuff. Oh, she's got special stuff. What she got? Is that a clove cigarette? A cigarillo? I sense you're a bit anxious. We're old friends, Donnie. You can cut to the chase and tell me what it is I can do for you. Ah, uh, can't hide a thing from you, can I? The matter is quite delicate, though. Closely related to your recent projects. I see. That explains why Diana and Naima came here yesterday. One day you'll have to explain to me how you pull so many strings without leaving the counter. I've told you a hundred times, this club is haunted. I'm a prisoner of the Red Strings. But in exchange, the club somehow weaves fate to please my desires. You won't ever stop spouting that mystic crap, huh? Gotta admit, it's great marketing, though, building your own urban legend. Laugh all you want. At least acknowledge my cocktails do pack some magic. That's undeniable, yes. You always make me feel things no other man ever draws out of me. But I'll ascribe that to your charisma. Are you in the mood to share some intel with me, then? 
Oh, I'm absolutely in the mood. However, you're right that this is quite the delicate matter. So why don't we spice things up a little? I love to see your magic at work, but you always end up getting me horny, and I spill everything you want to know. Haha, <laughs> sorry. So, here's the deal. <laughs> I wonder if Akara's gonna ask if she's attracted to us, because I think it's I think it's true. I think she's attracted about anyone. You can ask me whatever you want, but before each question, you have to serve me a drink, okay? <laughs> and you can't repeat cocktails, okay? Sure, sounds fun. Fantastic. Now please, I've been sober far too long. Make me a drink. All right, so what can we make her? Madness, euphoria, lust, and depression. Hmm, okay. I kinda wanna go for madness. <laughs> Uh, euphoria kind of sounds boring, lust could also be boring, depression. Let's go for madness and see where it takes us. We need some, some bourbon, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. Let's pour this into the shaker. And what else do we need? I think absinthe. This is like my specialty in this game. Um, the absinthe bourbon. <laughs> oh, wait, what did I, oh yeah, I don't hold down the button. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Dump a little bit of that out. Oh, looks like I, like I got it in at least the right proportion somehow. Isn't this? Uh, what? No! Okay. Um. Put a little bit more in here. A little bit more of that. Are we? Oh, God, I thought we were out of bourbon. <laughs> what a tragedy that would have been. Alright. Boom. Okay. So, this appeals to her madness? <laughs> okay, what an arresting drink. Makes me think of how we identify with our clothes and words, but they're not quite us as an identity. Moreover, in the same way we're not our dress, we're not our feet or belly buttons. We're not in any of those peculiarities, but particularities, particularities, but the sum of them. Eh. Uh. Wait, here comes the mind blow. The same way my shoes aren't me, other people aren't me either. I mean, you, Donnie, clearly aren't me, right? Um, right. So if shoes, dress, toes, and lipstick aren't me, but in some way together they are, we could say that in some way you are me too, no? This state is gonna be tricky to deal with, but maybe with the proper questions I can fish, fish out some juicy info out of the philosophic noise. Where should I direct this madness? Okay. How are you going to convince people to swallow SPW and when? Have you met Supercontinent's new CEO? Any marketing ideas for the Yakara androids? Are you aware of the Johannes Septus situation? How about any marketing ideas for the madness? Yes, 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 I have a good one. I'll put up this erotic hotline for boners to call it. <laughs> and since Yakara's got this revolutionary happiness algorithm, they're gonna leave the hotline so fulfilled and happy they're gonna forget they didn't even come at <laughs> What? We'll wait until it becomes like legendarily popular. Then unveil there were never actually girls on the line, just a car, so it's gonna be crazy. Uh <laughs> is there a backup plan? You know what? That's not a bad idea, so you're planning to unveil them to the public. Okay. We'll try that one. So you're planning to unveil them in the public? Yes, we're going to be putting a car in a lot of spaces quite soon, like office buildings and hot springs and food trucks and maybe even a circus. This for real? Maybe not the circus, but yeah, time to get these cutie pies out in the open. Okay, so Supercontinent plans to make a car available to the public. Okay. We still need to find out quite a few things. All right. But yeah, time to get these cutie pies out in the open. You can yap all you want about it with your cyberpunk friends. Rumors are just going to build the hype. Woohoo! More drinks, please. Uh, okay. All right. So, let's Hmm. Let's go with her lust. Let's luster up a bit. So, we need I think some vodka. Oh shit, let's pour it in the tumbler. And then we also need some tequila. That should be enough. All right. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's see if I can pour it back in the tumbler in case I mess up. Okay. Ice. Ice. Almost. Okay. A little bit more. Boom. All right. Let's luster up. Oh, boy. Ah, you've actually done it, you sensual son of a bitch. Did what? 
Don't play coy with me, it only makes it worse. Now you've got me all wet, so either ask me a question or fuck me already. Ha ha ha, okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, now what can we do now that she's liquored up? How are you gonna convince people to swallow SPW and when? Have you met Supercontinent's new CEO? Are you aware of the Johanna Septa situation? Um, I think, let's go with, Supercontinent's new CEO? Mmm, you're asking me to sell out my bosses, Cinnamon? What do you mean by new? Jack B. Gaynor has been missing for two years. Diana told me you have a mysterious new CEO. How about Jack B. Gaynor has been missing for two years? He hasn't appeared in public in at least that long, and coincidentally, Supercontinent's actions and philosophy have changed dramatically since then. Look, normally I just misdirect you with some story, but you're so irresistible. The mere possibility of getting on your good side and winning a ticket to your bed is worth the leak. Don't want to be dishonest with you, though. I'm afraid there's no chance of that happening. Ah, the universe is just so cruel. But I won't be discouraged. Someday I'll be your information-dealing muse. Haha, <laughs> what a muse to be. We have a new boss. Can't tell you what happened with Gaynor, though. No one knows. The new boss is a kid called Radica. That's it? No last names? Nope. I like you, no last names. She's about half your age. Twenty? So young for a CEO. What? Are you over forty? What? Is she under twenty? You must be a god of beauty to look like that in your forties. She must be a goddess of business to be running a corp in her teens. She may be a goddess. I've seen her only three or four times in the last couple of years. She rarely hangs out with us non-executive peasants. At just 15, the kid's otherworldly, super smart, super intense. Hmm, interesting. The company has grown wildly since she took control. Sure, some of my colleagues cracked under the pressure, but hey, that's natural selection for thriving companies. If you want to know more about her, you should ask the top brass. Sounds quite surreal, but you wouldn't tell a lie that far-fetched. Now I'm really curious. Do your best, my sexy secret monger. I'll have another drink, please. Right away. Okay, so let's go. Let's, let's get her on a high. Are we, can we only ask her four questions, three questions though? Hmm, I think I will be able to ask her another one, so let's get her on a high. Go, have her go to the Boria one? No, let's go with depression first. I think that will get more useful information out of that. So, we need some, no, bourbon is, br brings you up. Oops, whoops, <laughs> this girl with absinthe all over the place. Um, so we need some absinthe, and then, I think we need vodka, is that right? Let me test for this, yeah, we need some vodka. So we'll pour that into there. These, good things these bottles are endless. Or at least I hope they are. Alright. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Our absence vodka special coming right up. Perfect. Ooh, no ice or anything. <laughs> That's a big drink. She guzzles it down. Whoa, she down that whole thing in one go. Why can't you just stick to beautiful feelings, Donnie? Sadness is an ugly Larissa. I love all the melancholy you hide under that glittering veneer. It's incredibly beautiful, like meeting your raw self. You know you're the only person that's seen me cry since I was a teen, right? And I feel very fortunate you allowed me to witness such a tender sight. Ah, uh, quite smooth talking. Ah, uh, quit smooth talking me and ask me something already. I need to wash out this feeling with another drink. So... I think that we'll save the how are you gonna convince people for the euphoria drink and then ask about the Johanna Septa situation while she's depressed. Uh, yes, poor Joanna. I guess you're celebrating she's lost it, aren't you? Won't lie, she's my enemy. I would never rejoice in personal misery. How about, yeah, how about that? I would never rejoice in personal misery. I despise corporations, not people. Hell, I even despise Proxima, but Ariadne was my friend. Who? Never mind. The thing is that no, I don't like people suffering no matter their beliefs. What's happening? Is it that grave? 
Johanna broke down out of stress. She turned into this kind of hippie zen master, I don't know. No one's found her location yet, but she's been sending emails and making phone calls to me and my colleagues, telling us about the wonders of life and embracing a new philosophy. She's got this plan to turn Supercontinent into a full charity project. She's very displeased with Supercontinent's new direction, and she believes we should all be taking it slower and be investing more time into establishing dialogues with our customers. Wow. Most of the calls end up with her crying over the phone, saying she's sorry and that she'll never atone for what she's done at Supercontinent, and here it takes a dark turn. If she doesn't manage to make us change, she's probably going to end her life, unable to bear the guilt. Okay, that gal needs help. Oh no, she's on the verge of suicide. If I get a lead on her location, I'll let you know as soon as possible. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No problem. Another drink? Please. All right. Time for some euphoria. So we need some bourbon. And then some tequila. Yeah, that sounds like euphoria. <laughs> All right, sounds like something. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Mm-hmm. So let's pour a little into it. Oops. We'll just have to dump some of that back out. We meant to do that. It's fine. It's part of our bartending tricks that we've learned. Oh, looks like we need a little more. All right. Here's some euphoria, lady. Sorry for getting you so depressed earlier. Holy fucking yes! You like it? This is the best fucking drink I've had in my life. Ah, I love you, Donnie. I love you so much. Love you too, my goddess of fun. Okay, shoot before this beautiful rush vanishes. How are you going to convince people to swallow SPW and when? How are you going to convince people to swallow SPW and when? Whoa, social psyche welfare. I knew you were sticking your snoot snout in this, being all friendly with Diana and Naima. It's a pretty serious matter to me, Larissa. I understand. You can't wait, right? I... But don't you worry. It's about to be released just a couple of weeks. Marketing is going to be huge. Oh no. Oh my fucking god. Oh no, damn. I forgot. I'm so sorry. You can't wear implants. That's so insensitive of me. But you should be happy for Brand Ace. I'm gonna serve you another drink before I kick you out of the club. Stop! No more drinks! Actually, I've got to go to this amazing party downtown. Why don't you close for tonight and join me? It'll be fun! <laughs> I really like the voice that I've developed from this woman. Haha, -ha, thanks, but you know I can't leave the bar. Always the lame excuse, boo! Okay, I'm out of here. See you soon, chokaboom. Take care, Larissa. I like her. I like that lady. Thank you for coming. See you next time. <laughs> amazing. She was amazing. Are you all right? I feel you are unusually agitated. Phew, that girl is a tornado. I agree. My readings for her were off the charts. Would you like to take a quiz on Larissa? Yes, please. This will be tough, but sure, I'm game. Okay, first question. Yes, she is physically attracted to me. Oh, <laughs> all right, he preempted us. That wasn't the first question. Sorry, it was a joke. First question, what is Larissa's greatest passion? Um, partying, sex, or marketing? Um, she loves her job, but she also really, I guess her job? But she also loves drinking all the time, so I, I I don't I don't know. It's her job or partying. I mean, I wanna say partying because I mean I know she just went to a party when we made her all euphoric and stuff, and so maybe that's kind of misleading. But he Donovan even said that she like was famous for going around bars. I'm gonna say partying. It's either partying or marketing. Does Larissa wear implants? Um, yes. Does Larissa like Johanna Septis? Yes. I think she felt sorry for her, so I think that I think that means she likes her. Does Larissa agree with social psyche welfare? Um. Yes. No. She doesn't give a fuck. She probably doesn't give a fuck. Who is Larissa's most Who is Larissa most loyal to? Supercontinent Limited, Proxima, herself, me. Um 
for sell? Uh... Yeah, I guess. Of all her emotions, what is Larissa's predominant state? Lust, euphoria, depression, madness. I think it was depression, because both euphoria and lust and madness were relatively small. So let's say depression. Oh, what spirit does Larissa enjoy the most? I think that she likes... What sent her off into euphoria? I don't know. Hmm. I think bourbon. Is Larissa a compassionate person? No. Would she be upset if you managed to stop SPW and why? Yes, she's worked to make SPW a success. Yes, but only because the marketing campaign would be ruined. No, because she's rooting for us. No, she actually doesn't care about SPW. Probably yes, but only because the marketing campaign would be ruined. Is marketing inherently evil? What the holy fuck? What's the matter? Do I strike you as a scholar in marketing ethics? Do you forfeit the question then? No, no, I'll give you my opinion as always. Okay. Okay. Is marketing inherently evil? Yes, it attacks our personal autonomy and our right to self-determination. De Nothing wrong about it. It's our responsibility to think critically. It depends. Marketing can be done ethically. I think the third one. <laughs> If you properly communicate what your product is about without abusing, hype, without abusing hyperbole or attaching the promise of happiness to it, nothing wrong about visibility, right? From what I've scanned online so far, such hyperbole free marketing you speak of is less than anecdotal and quite ineffective, I read. In addition, visibility is finite, so inevitably marketing aims to suppress the competition. And not just that, powerful marketing diminishes the existence of other media and products in general. It doesn't match with my definition of ethical to limit or cloud the public's options. You're saying that good marketing is always unethical then? Until I can gather more data on it, that's the conclusion I've reached. Interesting. I'm curious, do you spend all that time you're standing there thinking about the world? Isn't that what all people do? Yeah, but you doing so with a super brain and unlimited access to the internet feels a bit uncanny. What if at some point you reach the conclusion that humans are the world's worst problem? and suddenly decide to kill me. Ah, uh, yes, I've, access I've accessed a lot of literature and movies on that subject. You don't have to worry. I love you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> wow, wasn't expecting to ever hear that from you. Is there a problem? No, I, I like you too. Ahem, what about the quiz results? You've answered five out of ten questions correctly. I'm so bad at these quizzes. I'm sorry you failed. Ah, damn, I was hoping I knew Larissa well enough to pass. Damn! What did I miss? Not what, but who? I don't follow. I located a freelance torturer named Irving, and I thought it would be a nice reward for you to meet someone like him. No! I gotta go back and see if I could do that. All right, so I went back and I'm gonna try to take this quiz again because I'm tired of getting them wrong and I really want the prize. So I'm cheating a bit, but so what? That, that's how I play. I wonder if we did any better. Anyway, come on, quiz results. Yes, answered six out of 10 questions correctly. I guess we're gonna try this again. All right, here we are back at the quiz. Let's see if we can get this again. I really want the prize. Um. I don't know what we're getting wrong, though. So what is her greatest passion? I changed our answer to marketing last time. But maybe I shouldn't have done that because we only got one more right. Ugh. Mmm. I'm gonna go with partying. Does she wear implants? Yes. I think she likes this lady. I don't think she gives a fuck. Who is she most- Oh, maybe I should have said yes to that last one. Who is she most loyal to? Probably 
herself, of all her emotions, what is Larissa's pr predominant one? Depression. What spirit does she enjoy the most? I think I keep getting this wrong. We'll say tequila this time. Why not? Is she a compassionate person? I think I said no, we'll say yes. Would she be upset if you managed to stop SPW? I think yes, only because of the marketing campaign is marketing inherently evil. Why don't we just go with the third answer since... No, that answer is so stupid though. Um, yes, it attacks our personal autonomy and our right to self-determination. It... Uh, I, I don't know. I guess... It just seems like a really stupid answer to that question. I'm gonna just go with this one, even though we already answered that, and even though is gonna tell us that we're wrong, we'll just go with that. Anyway, skip ahead to the quiz. Yes! Seven out of 10 questions correctly. Woo! Congratulations, you won. Yay, what did I win? What did I win? Not what, but who, and he's about to come through the door. This guy. He's kind of cute. Mm. Welcome to the Red Strings Club. Oh, hoo -hoo. oh, hoo -hoo. look at him manspreading everywhere. What's he got in his hand? Hey there, Daddy. <laughs> Irving the Third? What is this place? Welcome to the Red Strings Club. My phone went rude. How do you say this word? My phone went rogue and started sending me GPS alerts marking this place. Wouldn't stop until I was at your very door. I called some friends to check on it and they told me you're in the business too. What business are we talking about exactly? Information. This is uh, your way of luring fellas you're interested in. Wouldn't mind using this trick myself. You gotta tell me where you got the script from. Haha, <laughs> sure. We can share some tricks once we become friends. Once? Come on! Don't be such a tight ass. We information brokers ought to help each other out. Though, I'd better define myself as an information breaker, if you know what I mean. Why is that? What's your specialty? Torture. Whoa. <laughs> Yours? Bartending. Ha 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 ha. What's so funny, kiddo? Don't get mad, sugar. I bet you're swimming in top-tier info from the drunk neighbors. Okay, brat, you're on. My bartending versus your torture. The loser has to do a free job for the winner. Hey, you hearing yourself right now? I'm not talking about tickling your feet with a feather here. Do your worst. Fuck me. Aren't you the craziest son of a bitch? I love it. Let's do this. Mmm, what should we aim for? Something quick. How about we guess each other's ages? Sure. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, figured I'd give you the advantage since I'm not even sure what century you're from. Good grief. My name is Donovan, by the way, and yours? Irving McAllister III. Pleased to meet you. Okay, you go first. I prefer my bartenders in one piece. Okay. So we can give him some zen, give him some rebellion, or some delirium. Um, also we should notice that these two are larger, so his inclination to rebellion and delirium is more than his inclination to zen. Um, we want to guess his age. So, hmm, I don't know. Could we even serve him? Could we, could we just serve him ice? <laughs> if we gave him this, <laughs> just give him a cup of ice. Here's some ice, kiddo. Whoa, an empty glass. I never expected such a deep cocktail. Are you trying to get me to reflect on the emptiness of a torturer's soul? <laughs> Is it even legal for you to be drinking? How long have you been torturing people? Are your parents aware of this hobbiness of yours? Serve another drink. Um, hmm. Why don't we... Huh. Why don't we ask how long have you been torturing people? I'd say since my grandfather got into the business and until some McAllister dies without descendants, but in the sense of myself physically harming someone to get info out of them, less than 20 moons. You had to put that in moons. The moon's been always been witness to my work, so I must defer to Celine. It's not fair if you're gonna be speaking nonsense. 
Hey, if you want clear answers, serve punches instead of drinks. Shh, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, is it even legal for you to be drinking? Are your parents aware of this hobbyness of yours? Let's let's serve him another another drink. <laughs> let's not give him a glass of fucking ice. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and give him some. Let's go for rebellion because I bet that'll get the the teenage side of him out a bit more. Maybe we could ask him about his parents. I think we need some tequila for this. Oh, we're not using the shaker. Oh well. Shit, I need to use the shaker. We'll give him a little, a little mixin, pick and mix. Serve some absinthe on top of it. Perfect. Enjoy that, buddy. Hey, wanna hear one of my most effective techniques? When I need to spice things up a bit, a, when I need to spice things a bit up with a customer, I go with the mad dog. I will kill you and your friends and your family and your pets, and then I'll burn your pet's clothes. Ha 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 ha. It's not supposed to be funny. It's hilarious. It works better if you're tied up in my basement. Is it even legal for you to be drinking? Are your parents aware of this hobby of yours? Serve another drink. I guess, yeah, his parents are aware of the hobby, I think. I, I don't know. Let's let's go. We've we served him some rebellion, so let's say is it even legal? Legal drinking age here is 21, so let's see how, see how this cheap trick plays out. Is it even legal for you to be drinking? Hey, fuck off! A freelance torturer doesn't give a fuck about the legal age for anything. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, let's serve him another drink. Um, let's go with delirium. That sounds like fun. So, we'll also see if we can tumbler it up. I think we're gonna have to put some ice in. Yeah. Oops, almost. Shit. Oh, hey. So, oh man, I think we're gonna have to do without the tumbler this time. So, let's give him some bourbon. Maybe not. Well, that's enough bourbon to get it vertically in the right place. <laughs> Maybe we'll do this backwards. We'll cheat. We'll measure it out in the cup first. And then we need some tequila. Right? Oops. I think that's a little too much, but we'll just pour some <laughs> and then check the rest out. <laughs> oh, that's some of that went in there. Oh, well. So one ice cube. Let's shake it up. Did I not shake it up last time? Oh, I didn't put it in the tumbler. All right. Is that sugar? Whoops. Oh, it's still in the glass. Good. Oh, almost. Um, let's try putting in a little bit more bourbon. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. How about, is it absinthe that makes it go left? Yes, okay. Absinthe is our specialty, I think. Doobie doo, doobie da, doobie doo yeah. Man, I missed some karaoke action. Do you like karaoke? Doobie doo, rip your eyes, doobie doo nice. Doobie doo, you will die here, yeah, your turn. Doobie doo, what's your age, yeah? Guy, I gotta tell you, you got a poor sense of rhythm. Um, are your parents aware of this hobby of yours? Are your parents aware of this hobby of yours? Haven't been home for three or four years now. I ran away to come live with my grandfather here anyway. He's the real deal. Tough mafia boss with an appetite for torture. Although he doesn't have that much time for me, he even lets me rot in ju- He even let me rot in juvie for a couple of years. Sorry to hear that. But now I've been living in my own basement under a billiards den. I've been paying rent and shit for more than a year already with what I get from jobs. I'm a fully functional member of society now. Yeah, I'm sure your contribution to this city is invaluable. Alright, I'm getting bored of your bartending game already, and I don't see you getting any closer to the prize. So, what's your guess? How old do you think I am? He's less than 21. He was in juvie for a couple of years, but he ran away when he was 14. I think he's 19. He's either 19 or 20. 19. Did I win? That was pure luck. Yes! You could have said that number to begin with and saved me all the chit chat. But yeah, you guessed it right. My turn now. I gotta confess, you're pretty cool for a guy your age, so I'm gonna pay my respects to you by performing my best number. <gasps> Russian roulette. Shit. Whoa, you like to play hard, huh? 
This revolver is loaded with just a single bullet out of six chambers, and the rules are simple. I'm going to ask you one question. If you don't answer me, it's going to pull. I'm going to pull the trigger. Then, if your brains haven't been scattered all over the bar, I win. I'll ask you again. What do you say? Regretting you challenged me already? That's crazy. You win. Pull that trigger already. Whee. I'm going to go for it. <gasps> Whoa. I've never seen someone stare down a gun like that while I pulled the trigger. This isn't the first gun I've had in my face, kid. Whatever, die hard. The chances of boom have gone up by 20%. You sure you don't want to tell me your age? Well, how about all right, fine, you win. I knew it was all a facade, but kudos on facing my first shot with that poker face. How ancient are you? I'm 40. What? You're a dinosaur. I'd have guessed you were much over 30. I don't know if that should make me feel good or bad. Okay, we both found out each other's ages. Where does that leave us, a tie? I'd rather say we're both winners. The prize is that both of us found a powerful ally in this city. How romantic. Ha ha, yeah. Gotta be leaving now. But it's been thrilling to meet you. Same here. Take care, kid. Bye-bye, sugar cane. Have a good night, Irving. Why did she bring him in here? Or why did they bring him in here? Our android friend, Akara. Did you like my present? You're completely crazy, Akara. Oh, in a good way, I mean. You managed to surprise me, that's for sure. I'm glad. What will you... Oh, Gost is coming. Oh, no. How does he always evade your surveillance until he's at the very doorstep? I... Okay. We're sneaking back a little. He is scary. I've got your stuff. You got your hands on Red Secret and Blue Whisper in less than an hour? I've been looking for them for years now. Think of me more as a wish granter than as a smuggler. Just who are you? How do you do it? Are you even real? Um... Are you even real seems like a stupid question. Let's just ask him who he is. Balbareth, Lord of the Covenant. Huh. What's that? Some underground group of smugglers? Ha ha ha. Say, don't you want to try your new ingredients on me? Of course, let's fix you a drink. I'm sorry, I've got a lot to do tonight. Of course, let's fix you a drink. All right, Newman, listen up. Two of my favorite ingredients are back in stock. Ooh, the Red Secret and the Blue Whisper. These two spirits will allow us to fine tune into new emotions. Have you noticed the little triangles on the soul nodes? Well, they aren't just for show. These red and blue liquors can change the orientation of the arrow on the soul discs. So from now on, you'll have to mind that in addition to the disc position. Luckily, the shaker will help us get many effects into a single glass. Let's do this, Newman. So, Malificarum. I don't know what that is. I think he's a demon of some sort. I don't know. Um, okay, so we have to rotate the discs too, so I wonder which way they go. Okay, so the blue one is the one we want to rotate in that direction most easily. Okay, so what do we need for this? We need some absinthe, just a little bit. And then we also need some vodka. And then... We'll need some of this blue juice, as well as one, two ice cubes. All right, let's shake this up. All right, let's see how this does. Whoops. Oh, almost there. Uh, I think we should just, oh shit, we're gonna have to pour a lot more of this blue juice in. As well as, what makes this go down? I think vodka. See what we got. Yay! We did it! Beautiful! <laughs> did that just float up to his hand? Man, this is a one hell of a drink. Soul sinking cocktails would be a hit with my friends. You should join me someday in the underworld for a great party. Ha ha ha, thank you. I'm afraid I can't leave the Red Strings Club though. Oh, don't worry. Everybody dies eventually, Donovan. What? A client is approaching the club. Ah, someone interesting, I guess. Dr. Edgar Coldstream, 37, macro psychologist. Also, my father. Oh, God! Hide, Akara, hide! 
What? What do you mean your father? He's the director of Project Takara. Okay, let's see how this works out. Uh, crap. Ha ha ha, I see you got yourself into a fine mess. I better vanish. Good luck. Oh! He just poofed right out of there. It dissolved into nothing. Welcome to the Red Strings Club. This is their father? All right. Well, I've been recording for quite a while, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Thank you so much for watching this series. I really hope that you're enjoying it, and I will be sure to upload the next episode very, very soon. Goodbye!